chapter 2. Amen. Everybody can probably quote Acts chapter 2. I'm sure most of y'all can quote the whole chapter, right? All right. Well, I knew you started off and I'll let you finish it. <laughs> Acts chapter 2. I know we can quote at least the first part of it. But I'm skipping down past all the good stuff. Amen. Everything we build, everything around. And we're going down to Acts chapter 2, verse 40. Amen. You got it? Say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Stand for the reading of the word, please. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. That's a pretty good revival. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they, continuing daily, with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Hallelujah. I want to preach tonight just for a little while from this thought. Recipe for revival. Hallelujah. Recipe for revival. Amen. Let's put our Bibles down. Let's lift our hands and ask the Lord to help us here tonight. My God, I love you, Jesus. Lord, I realize I can do nothing without you. I'm nobody in your sight tonight. God, I need your help. God, I need your anointing right now. God, I'm asking you to move into this place right now, God. Allow your spirit to flow through this house. Speak to your people tonight, God. Speak to our hearts, not just to our heads, God. And Lord, I'm asking you to deal with us tonight, God, and move in our hearts and lives in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Amen. I wanted to preach this for a little while. Recipe for revival. Now, they were the original revival. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This was the original church. Amen. Actually, this was the day the original church was established. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts chapter 2. Uh, of course, you know the first part of that chapter. You can all quote it probably all the way through. Amen. More than likely all the way down to verse 38 anywhere, close to it. And if not, I hope you can quote verse 38. Hallelujah. Amen. But it's the beginning of the church that we know today. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to understand the church started in revival. Hallelujah. And it has never been God's will for it to be anything less. Hallelujah. Amen. And I, I believe tonight that the church in this day and hour is horribly missing. Amen. The mark when it comes to revival. We are the end time church. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that this is the last days and I believe that we are the end time church. Hallelujah. Amen. My generation may pass away before uh, the Lord comes back, but I don't really know about that. Amen. I, I really feel like it's really, really getting close now. And, uh, you know, whatever you're going to do, you need to get it done. Hallelujah. Amen. But whatever you're going to do doesn't need to be revolving around you and your life. It needs to be revolving around your God. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to get everything together in our hearts and our minds and our lives and have him the center of it. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I began to study this out the other night just a little bit. The Lord began to impress on me and begin to deal with me. Woke me up the other morning. Amen. Uh, there was a recipe in here. Amen. You know, there's some, some uh, things that are recipes for disaster. <laughs> Hallelujah. But there's a recipe in here for revival. 
And so I began to search it out. I began to seek it out and ask the Lord to begin to reveal his word to me. And I believe that uh, I picked up on a few things here that the Lord wanted me to share with you. In verse 42, the Bible said, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Hallelujah. Amen. The word steadfastly there comes from the Greek, pros prosker, terio, meaning to adhere to one. The Bible lets us know there is but one. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 5 said there is only one Lord, Amen. one faith, and one baptism. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Church world will tell you there's a lot of ways to go to Houston. Amen. And I've said this before. We're not trying to get to Houston. We're trying to get to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. If I want to go to Houston, I know a lot of ways to get there. But you know what? When I get to Houston, I'll be just as lost as I am right now. If I was lost. Hallelujah. But you understand, because uh, there's only one way to get to heaven. Amen. God didn't create several different roads. The Bible said there's only one path. Hallelujah. Amen. There's only one highway. There's only, uh, and it's a straight and narrow path. Amen. And uh, few there be that find it. Hallelujah. Our job as the church is to help people, amen, begin to find that path. Is to help people to move, amen, towards uh, that path that God has got for folks in this end time hour. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we, we have to adhere to the doctrine. Amen. We cannot back down. We cannot change. What, you know what? The, the, the world now. Amen. The churches in the world are beginning to uh, change their, their doctrine. In fact, just this last week, I believe it was, uh, uh, Kenneth Copeland, wasn't it, Mama? One of the other uh, well-known uh, evangelicals. Amen. They call themselves evangelicals. We have nothing to do with that. And understand when they talk about evangelicals, they try to lump us in there. We are not of that guilt. Okay? Amen. We are not evangelical. We're Holy Ghost filled, sanctified. Amen. By Him. Hallelujah. And so uh, Kenneth Copeland and some of the others just this last week uh, met with the Pope. And they're talking about bringing everybody back together. They want unity in the church, they said. And so we're talking about people that claim the Holy Ghost. We're talking about people, amen, that, that have miracles and signs and wonders that happen in their ministries. And, and they're wanting to go back uh, to the mother church and uh, hook back up with the Pope and hook back up with the mother church. Let me tell you something. Amen. We didn't come out of that, and we aren't going back to that. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible said, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not their uncleanness. Hallelujah. Amen. God is the one that created this church. Hallelujah. On the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 2, uh, amen, you can read about the, the formation of God's church. Uh, it didn't happen in 325 A.D. Uh, when Constantine began to tell uh, we need to uh, create a church to pull everybody together, all the different religions of the world together. That you see, the devil's always been after one world church, and it's going to happen in the end time. But I'm here to tell you, there's a group that's going to stand out. There's a group that's not going to fit with that crowd. Hallelujah. They've been their Holy Ghost filled. They've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. Hallelujah. They've been separated. They've been. Church of the living God has no partner lot with the Roman church. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have to continue steadfastly, meaning to adhere to that doctrine. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what adhere means? Stick to it. Hallelujah. Just got baptized. Sorry, probably needed it. <laughs> Stick to it. I, you know, I always one of been one of my biggest things I've always hated is folks that start something and never stick with it. You know, they'll they'll, they'll come to church for a while and then all of a sudden, you know, they're hit and miss. I, 
I, it's never been in my heart to be hit and miss with the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, you hear what I'm saying tonight? Amen. I, I like what I do. I like serving Him. There's been, never been a place in my life, amen, where I wanted to go do something else. I'm sure I could have if I would have wanted to. Oh, but you see, when you make Him the center of your life, hallelujah. You hear what I'm saying tonight? When you create, oh, David said, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew a right spirit in me, hallelujah. Make me what I need to be in you, oh hallelujah. And when we begin to do that, we will begin to lock in with him. Oh, Brother West, amen, when we begin to get on his page, hallelujah. When we begin to get lined up with him and follow his doctrine and do the things he says to do, hallelujah. To begin to flow around you. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, the, the, the best thing that ever happened to this boy, amen, was receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I, I don't know any other way. I don't want to know another way. All these people that are coming up with all these new ideas, well, we can do it this way. You know, we don't have to have all that dress code. We don't have to hold to that. We don't have to do this. It's okay for you to watch movies. It's okay for you to do this and do that. Let me tell you something. I, I have no partner lot with the world. Neither do I want to part with them. Hallelujah. Amen. God has set us aside. We're a special people. We're a call out. You hear me? We're called out from the world. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right. So we are one. And we're hearing to that one doctrine. And then he said, in breaking of bread. Oh, Lord, we'd love to do that. Hallelujah. Fellowship. You know what that does? And, 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 and this church, we've had quite a few things over the last several years of fellowship with, with our own selves here. And uh, I believe it's time that we begin to expand our horizons and fellowship out to with other churches, amen, that are of like precious faith. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we, we can't, we're no man is an island, no church is an island. We can't just hold it all to ourselves. Amen. We've got to have the fellowship of our brethren and sister. Amen. Uh, you, you understand what I'm saying tonight when they were breaking bread? It was a time of fellowship. Oh, hallelujah. I love it when we go out on our camp outs. I like it. Amen. We're, we're going to do a little Fourth of July deal tomorrow evening. Uh, but there's some folks that are just dead set on uh, it's going to be their way or no way. And bless God, uh, I'm just not going to go to that. Uh, yeah, you know what? You're, you're just missing the will of God. It's the will of God that we fellowship together. It's the will of God that we break bread together. Hallelujah. You know why? Because it creates a unity. And a person who refuses to, to cooperate in those things, you know what they're doing? They're breaking the unity of the church. One of the biggest things, now, several years ago, I, I met Tech Lemuria. Of course, now I think he's done gone off the rocker and went into a different type of faith of some sort. I'm not sure what, but uh, back then, uh, brother and sister uh, oh, Friedman had worked with brother Tech Lemuria and had got him in the church in, in Ethiopia, and, and they had been through persecution. Uh, been through a lot of things and then and they were seeing great great revival let me tell you something persecution brings revival i don't want to have to go through that to see revival in abilene i i really don't think it god god plans on that hey man for us to have revival here we're here now there's 117,000 people here now hallelujah who need revival Amen. They're walking along in their false doctrine, believing they're okay, and walking straight towards hell. Amen. But we got the truth. Amen. And so I was, at, because of the times in Alexandria, Louisiana, and Brother Tech was there, and so I went to him after service, and I sat down with him, and I said, I want you to tell me, what do you do? For revival, I know prayer is a key thing. He said, prayer is the only thing. Hallelujah. And I said, how do you pray for revival? I want to know how you pray for revival because we're praying our guts out. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing happening, but we're praying hard. 
And we were. And you know what he told me? He said, we never prayed for revival. Well, then how do you have revival if you're praying and you're not praying for revival? He said, we pray for unity. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. He said, we pray for unity because unity is what brings revival. Amen. You don't believe it, but Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Amen. They were all in one accord in one place. Hallelujah. They, they all were of the same mindset. You hear what I'm saying? They were all there expecting the same thing. They didn't know what it was they were expecting. They had never experienced the Holy Ghost. you got to understand that. Amen. They were there because Jesus said, I want you to go together. Hallelujah. And dwell in the upper room until you be endued with power from on high. Oh, come on. If he could speak to us here tonight, he would tell us, I want you to dwell together in unity because I've got a power that I'm going to send your way. Hallelujah. I've got revival all packaged up and ready to go for Abilene, Texas. But I just need some people who will get in unity. I need some people, amen, who won't just bow out every time something's going on in the church. But I'll be there and say, what can I do? What can I bring? How can I participate? Now there's three thousand. We know there's three thousand already got the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Now you gotta understand, most of those did not live around the Jerusalem area. No, most of those were people from all of the countries. Remember Acts chapter two. After they received the Holy Ghost, they went out the streets. They were and they, they, they thought they thought they were drunk. They said, No, these are not drunk. You suppose Peter said, See this, but the third hour of the day is only nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that spoken by the prophet Joel in the last day. Said God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And, and they said, well, how is it that we, amen, we're Parthians, we're Medes, we're dwellers in Mesopotamia, we're Cretes, we're Romans. How are we hearing these people speak the wonderful works of God in our own languages? Hallelujah. You see, this is the operation of the Holy Ghost. There's power that comes in unity. <laughs> and look what it does. It brings revival. Amen. 120 received the Holy Ghost. 120 are worshiping freely without... Well, they're not being held back. They're out in the streets worshiping. Hallelujah. Hence, street service started on the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. First street service also. Amen. So we're not doing something stupid when we have street services. We, we need to continue on with that. But you understand, they didn't hold back. The Holy Ghost fell. Amen. They worshiped him in tongues. Oh, hallelujah. How many times have we been out on the street and you've been a little bit shy of letting the Holy Ghost move on you? You could feel the anointing. You could feel the touch. But you were kind of a little bit shy as far as letting the Holy Ghost move and minister through you. How often have we missed the will of God? Amen. By holding back on God. And God is saying, ah, I need some unity in the Holy Ghost. I need some unity in your spirit so that my spirit can work in you and through you. And you can see revival. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. All right. So they broke bread. There was, there was fellowship. Amen. Then it said in prayers. Now, it's not very long that I see Peter in prison. And uh, he's not just stuck in a cell up there by uh, Barney Fife. Amen. No, they put him down in the bottom of the prison house. They carried him down into the dungeon in the very bottom of the prison and the Bible said they, they placed uh, all these soldiers who were on guard around him. 
Hallelujah. But, but he is down in the bottom of the prison, and he's chained to a guard on each side. Hallelujah. Amen. He's got an old Bubba on this side and old Joe on this side, and they're all chained up to him, and he ain't going nowhere. So he's trying to make the best of a bad situation. I, I believe that, that, that uh, Peter probably was praying also. The Bible doesn't record that.